order. Today is Tuesday, April 19, 2016. It's 9 a.m. We're at the Palm Coast City Hall for a regularly scheduled meeting of the Palm Coast City Council. Would you please rise and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much. Roll call, please. Mayor Nets? Here. Vice Mayor Shipley is excused. Councilmember DiLorenzo? Here. Councilmember McGuire? Here. Councilmember Nobile? Here. First item on our agenda is the approval of the minutes of the April 5th, 2016 City Council meeting and the April 12th City Council workshop. Are there any additions, corrections, or is there a motion for approval? Move to approve. Second. Moved and second. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries that objection. Agenda item number two, proclamation recognizing the month of April as National Mayor's Challenge for Water Conservation Month. And I guess I'll do this one myself. Looks like you're all wet to me. manage residential consumption of water and power and to inspire citizens to care for our natural resources. And whereas cities, including Palm Coast, can engage in efforts to inspire their own city as well as neighboring communities to become better environmental stewards. And whereas the fifth annual National Mayor's Challenge for Water Conservation, presented by the Wyland Foundation and Toyota, with the support of the U.S. EPA WaterSense, the Toro Company, the National League of Cities, conserve irrigation, and earth-friendly products is a healthy, non-profit competition for cleaner communities and a water use and pollution reduction competition between our cities. And whereas, with the encouragement of Palm Coast Mayor John Nets, residents may, may register their participation in our city's challenge online by making simple pledges to decrease their water use and to reduce pollution for the period of one year thereby assisting their cities to apply state and federal water conservation strategies to target mandated reductions. And whereas during the month of April 2016, the city of Palm Coast wishes to inspire its residents and its neighboring communities to take the Wyland Mayor's Challenge for Water Conservation by making a series of online pledges at mywaterpledge.com to reduce their impact on the environment and to see immediate savings in water, trash, and electricity bills. Now therefore, be it proclaimed by the Palm Coast Mayor John Nets and the City Council of the City of Palm Coast, that the month of April be hereby officially designated National Mayor's Challenge for Water Conservation Month in the City of Palm Coast, and that all citizens are encouraged to take their challenge by April 30th, signed this 19th day of April, 2016, my pleasure to sign this as mayor. Thank you. Yeah. You guys want to say a few things? Well, I just wanted to announce the fact that as of this morning, we ranked third in the country for our population. So let's keep voting. Thank, Thank you, you, all of you. Last year, we finished the year second. We did really well for this year. So encourage your neighbors, friends, and folks to push the button. MyWaterPledge.com. Thank you. We're going to go up on the stage and do a picture. Take a photo and we'll also show a video. Okay. Come on, follow me. Walk this way. I mean, not Thank you. 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 Thank you.
Hey, Palm Coast, save water. Take the Palm Coast Water Pledge. Hi, I'm Palm Coast Mayor John Nets. By saving water, our businesses and residents save energy, money, and valuable resources. And that's why I'm encouraging you to take the National Mayor's Challenge for Water Conservation, April 1st through April 30th. Last year, among hundreds of cities our size, Palm Coast finished a fabulous seventh place in the number of pledges. With your help, I know we can do even better this year. By making a simple pledge to save water and reduce pollution, you're not only doing your part for Palm Coast, you can win any of hundreds of prizes too, including a Toyota Prius. Let's show other cities around the nation how Palm Coast takes care of our planet. Make your pledge throughout the month of April. Go online to www.mywaterpledge.com. Discover Palm Coast, find your Florida. So do it. <laughs> Agenda item number three, proclamation recognizing April as Autism Awareness Month. Mr. Nobile.
Agenda item number four, proclamation recognizing the week of May 8th, 2016 as Turquoise Takeover. Who's got that lucky one? Mr. McGuire. Whereas every five minutes, a woman in the United States is told she has lung cancer. And whereas lung cancer is the number one cancer killer of women in the U.S., and whereas the lung cancer death rate in women has almost doubled over the past 37 years, and whereas advocacy and increased awareness will result in more and better treatment for women with lung cancer and other lung diseases and will ultimately save lives, and whereas Lung Force is the national movement led by the American Lung Association with the mission of making lung cancer history, United, uniting women to stand together with a collective strength and determination to lead the fight against lung cancer and for lung health. Now, therefore, be it proclaimed by the City Council of the City of Palm Coast, Florida, that the second full week of May 2016 be officially designated as Women's Lung Health Week in the City of Palm Coast. All citizens are encouraged to learn more about the detection and treatment of lung cancer. Signed this 19th day of April, 2016, City of Palm Coast, Florida, John Nets, Mayor. Accepting the award, there's no one. She's actually running late this morning. Okay. Wait, here she is. I think she just walked in, Council Member McGuire. Step back, Bill. Agenda item number five, proclamation recognizing April as Sexual Assault Awareness Month. Mr. DiLorenzo. Sexual Assault Awareness Month calls attention to how widespread sexual violence is and the need for justice and healing, and whereas rape, sexual assault, and sexual harassment statistics unfortunately show that one in five women and one in 33 men will be raped at some point in time in their lives, and one in six boys and one in four girls will experience childhood sexual abuse before the age of 18. And whereas in 2015, the Flagler County Sheriff's Office made 25 sexual assault arrests and estimates indicate only 20% of sexual assaults are reported to law enforcement and fewer than 3% result in conviction and incarceration of the perpetrator. And whereas the Family Life Center served the needs of Flagler County's victims last year during 45 crisis interventions, 404 supportive services, and 18 forensic exams, law enforcement interviews, and other proceedings. And whereas it is critical for friends and family members to support victims and help them access community resources such as the Family Life Center and to engage the criminal justice system. And whereas government leaders must work together to educate our community about sexual violence prevention to support survivors and speak out against harmful attitudes and actions. Now therefore be it proclaimed by the Palm Coast Mayor and the City Council of the City of Palm Coast do hereby designate April 2016 as Sexual Assault Awareness Month and encourage all residents to help raise awareness and to participate in educational opportunities to create a safer community and a productive future change for all of us. Signed this 19th day of April 2016, City of Palm Coast, Florida, John Nets, Mayor. Good morning, Trish. Good morning. To speak. Thank you. Good morning. Uh, thank you so much for allowing us the opportunity to accept this proclamation from the City of Palm Coast. We always ask that our community support victims of sexual assault. It's such a horrific crime to undergo. Um, we at the Family Life Center have begun a Start by Believing campaign. And what we are asking is that if you um, hear of a victim of crime, ordinarily we take what that victim says for what it is. It's a crime. Um, it's not so much the case with a rape. Oftentimes when a victim comes forward to disclose a rape, we question the victim, we question their motives, question if they are victimized. 
uh, by asking what time of day did it happen, what were they wearing, what were they drinking. And so the Family Life Center is asking all of our community members to stop and take note. And a victim of a rape is, as a victim of any other crime, to start by believing. When the victim discloses to a friend or family member, which is historically the first way a victim will reach out, please start by believing what they have to say, regardless of where they were, what they were wearing, or what they were drinking. So we implore each and every one of you to start by believing, starting in April, but then moving forward as well. Thank you. Thank you very much. Good morning. Jim Manfrey, Sheriff of Flagler County. I'd like to acknowledge the Family Life Center and uh, Trish uh, Giacone in particular. Uh, before I took office, we were taking our sexual assault victims for almost a 40-minute ride, sometimes even longer. Uh, to get the adequate examinations that they needed. Uh, all the things that the Family Life Center does with domestic violence and dealing with uh, displaced families, they took on this role as well. So now, when we do have sexual assault victims, we bring them to a much uh, better uh, place here in our community, uh, and they are seen here at the Family Life Center. So i really like to acknowledge pu publicly uh, Trish and the, and the board and Rebecca for all you do for, for the women of and the sexual assault victims of this county. You do an incredible job. Thank you. Agenda item number six, resolution approving a final plat, Island Walk Shopping Center, a replat. Mr. Landon. A couple of exciting projects uh, today uh, that you have opportunity to approve the final plats. Both of them uh, retail centers. So we're going to start off with Island Walk, and Bill will give you the details. Mr. Um, Mayor, before we proceed, I'm sorry to interrupt. But these are um, quasi-judicial matters. So if there's been any ex parte communications, we need to have those disclosed. Ex parte disclosed. communications to be disclosed yes, sir. No. No. thank you mr mayor sorry to interrupt mr. and mayor i i should add that uh this presentation ne never mind that's the next one sorry bill go from here thank you <laughs> morning this site is this case commercial it's about 28.7 acres the owner developer is branch island walk associates limited partnership and it's located at the northwest corner of Palm Coast Parkway Northeast and Florida Park Drive. Sites currently comprised of three lots within the Palm Harbor Shopping Village subdivision. And the applicant simply wants to create four lots with three of the lots being located on out parcels along Palm Coast Parkway Northeast and each of those lot numbers are shown in uh, yellow so you can see where those three lots are and does council have any questions for staff on this Any questions seeing none we'll open the meeting from the public and from the public which should be heard on agenda item number six if you do please come up to the podium give us your name limit your contribution to three minutes Seeing no one approach the podium, we'll close the public portion meeting back to council. Additional questions, comments, or a motion? Move to approve. Second. Moved and seconded. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? 
Motion carries without objection. Thank you very much. Welcome. Agenda item number seven, resolution approving the final plat, Shops of Palm Coast subdivision, a replat. Mr. Landon. Mayor City Council, I, I, I guess I'd like to make a comment about how uh, Island Walk really has taken off and looks great. I think the developer promised a nice shopping center, and I think he's producing and coming through with that promise. This next one is uh, the shops at Palm Coast. It's, uh, it's something we've been hearing about for some time, and I uh, understand it's really going to happen sometime soon. Uh, Mayor, the, um, this presentation includes this item and the next item. They're actually two separate action items. But because they're related on the same plat, we're going to do one presentation, and then you can take two separate items. With that, uh, two separate I actions. Uh, Bill, with that, if you'll take it from here. Okay, this, this site's uh, located COM2 uh, General Commercial. It's about 12.9 acres, and it's at the uh, southeast corner of State Route 100 and Beltair Boulevard. The owner developer is PV Palm Coast LLC out of Safety Harbor, Florida. And on uh, June 3rd, 2015, the planning board approved a master plan for the site showing five lots, common area tract, and it, uh, a little over 60,000 square feet of commercial uses. In, in this case, the applicant will act as developer and sell off all five lots to end users. And three of the lots are under contract. Lot two for a gate convenience store with gas pumps. Lot three for an Aldi grocery. And lot four for a tractor supply company store. And this plat will simply create five lots plus a common area tract. And the common area tract will be used for an internal access roadway system a stormwater management system and also provide for some shared signage uh, opportunities. The, one of the more important things on the plat is that along lot one on the westerly 12 feet, you can see that in yellow, uh, the applicant will dedicate 12 feet of this land to the city for future right-of-way improvements along Beltair Boulevard. and switching over to the transportation impact fee agreement. Uh, in this case, the applicant was required to construct a eastbound turn lane on State Route 100 into the project's only access onto, uh, nor northerly access onto State Route 100. And additionally, they were required to put in sidewalks along Belterre Boulevard and State Route 100. Both the city and the developer have identified a couple other transportation improvements that would benefit city residents regarding future traffic capacity. And this agreement would allow those improvements to be made once we have received sufficient transportation impact fees from the retailers in this project. Uh, the highest priority for these two improvements is Improvement A, which is the northbound right turn lane for vehicles traveling north on Beltair, Beltair Boulevard that want to turn right on State Route 100. This also includes pedestrian crosswalk improvements along the south side of the intersection and the east side of the <coughs> intersection. The second improvement uh, is a southbound left turn lane into the project's most southerly access. And you can see there is, there is another access in the middle, but that one is too close to the big intersection up there for vehicles to safely stack and make a left turn lane. In looking at the numbers on this, the three lots under contract would generate about $422,000 in transportation impact fees. And the preliminary cost of these uh, two roadway improvements would be about $250,000 to $350,000. So the three lots themselves that are under contract would generate more than enough to cover the first improvements. And then if we estimate 
the additional funds for lots one and five will end up with uh, conservatively about the project would generate about twice in impact fees what the cost of these two projects would be. And if, the, if this is approved today, the, how, the way it would work is the city would receive transportation impact fees from like uh, probably Tractor Supply first, then Aldi, and then the uh, Gate Petroleum. The, then the uh, the city would notify the developer that we've received those impact fees and then the developer would provide the city a bid for engineering services and uh, uh, once that's approved then they would also provide us three bids for constructing the improvements and the city would have 30 days to review those each time the developer submits something to us on those bids. The agreement also allows the city the opportunity to design and construct the improvements if, if we so want it. That's the end of our presentation. Questions? I have one question. Can you go back three slides, I think? That one? One more. This uh, improvement B, the southern section here, are we adding a lane there? Correct. So, so it, okay. it allows traffic going southbound to sort of, they, they pull to their left and then they have a lane that they can set there until there's an opening to make a safe left turn. And that land doesn't need to be part of an easement? Like the, like the improvement A, there's, a, there's that right turn? No, that, the, the, you make those kind of improvements in the right-of-way. So it, as long as it's in the right-of-way, so the Improvement A is getting 12 feet, and that provides additional room for the 12-foot northbound turn lane. Okay. So all those improvements are out there in that right-of-way, and it's probably 100 feet wide, probably right now, maybe okay. 120. That's a, Dole, you uh, that leads uh, you led me to a question. Um, at, that, uh, at the amount of right-of-way we have now, in the future, if it needed to, if the road needed to be expanded to uh, two lanes southbound, would we have enough room for that and the turning lane? Let me see if Sean knows an answer to that. He does. <laughs> Thank you. Um, Sean Costello, city traffic engineer. Um, I believe we have, I, I believe we have about 100 feet of right of way out there. Um, it just, depends what we what the road if the road does end end up be being expanded to four lanes a lot of it is just going to uh, depend on on um what the roadway is going to look like so if we're going to go out there and we're going to have a a wide median like uh similar to what we have on Beltair right right now then um then we may need to look at uh, acquiring um, uh, additional right of way, but um, we would do um, as much uh, as much as we could possible to um, make sure that we can accommodate our roadway within our right of way. Okay, Mr. Landon, uh, should we consider um, uh, speaking to the developer about getting 12 foot? Uh, the length of the property so we don't have to go back and uh, try to acquire right away in the future if we needed to widen the roadway um, we got a hundred foot of right away and you've got um, 12 feet of lane that's uh, four lanes 48 feet I think we have you'd plenty. be at five lanes though I think yeah. because you'd, you'd have a turn five lane. lanes uh, okay you'd add so that's 60 feet and 100 foot of right away um, it would be how wide the median, you just have to make the median smaller. So I don't think it would be necessary just do an easy math. We have enough room. Yeah, see, the key to it is if you look at the map, right now we have three lanes at the intersection. And we're adding a fourth. And it's adding that fourth that is why we need the additional right-of-way. The left turn into the shopping center southbound, there's only two lanes there. So we're adding a third. Yeah. And then if you can tell that there's actually the, where we have the extra right away, it's on the other side of the street. Right. Mm -hmm. And so the other side of the street is where you'd start adding uh, additional uh, 
lanes if you want four lanes. Uh, if we had to obtain some right away, it would be very little, and it would just be in their buffer. It, it would be, uh, we'd be able to obtain it. But right now, um, my opinion, it would be more of a taking, just to take it just because we might need it, and that's really not uh, acceptable in today's world. What is the status of the undeveloped property to the west that's privately owned? Uh, I'm, I don't even think, is that in I think it's in the, is it, sure if that's in the county or not. Do, do not know, Mayor. But if we had, if at some point we needed to acquire more land, that would be the logical place to go. That very likely, very likely could be. I think 100 feet. Um, in this type of situation should be enough for four lanes. It may not be a real wide medium, but we should be able to keep it within that, okay. that area. Looking ahead. Additional council questions? Open the meeting to the public. Anyone from the public wish to be heard on this agenda item? Come up to the podium, give us your name, limit your contribution to three minutes, please. Good morning, George Mayo, Palm Coast. Uh, looking at the map, could you put the other map up that shows the entrance exits? Please, thank you, yes. Nope, okay. Uh, the center and uh, exit there, which will be for northbound only, and they show a little esplanade, so coming northbound, you'll be an entrance way. Will there be a median between the north and southbound lanes? And if there isn't, I would strongly suggest there be one, because I can guarantee cars are gonna pull out there and want to go southbound and they're just going to wait until they don't see a car and then pull southbound, whether they go in the uh, right turn lane heading northbound. Uh, just yesterday, a similar situation with the uh, exit over there by uh, Target, which is supposed to, on Beltaire, which is supposed to be northbound only, take a right turn. Pickup truck waited till he saw a gap between cars and cut across lane headed northbound in the southbound lane and then took a hard right because he didn't want to go all, all the way around. That's with four lanes on that side and, th and two on the other. I can guarantee the similar situation is going to happen in that uh, center exit there. So I would strongly suggest some type of median or fiberglass stakes preventing cars from doing that so as to prevent any kind of accident because they're definitely going to do that. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker. Next. <clears throat> we don't approach the podium. We'll close the public portion of the meeting. Sean, take that under advisement, please. Certainly we will. Back to City Council. Additional questions, comments, or a motion? Your Honor, I have a question. Mr. McGuire. If, if Sean is taking this under advisement, should we postpone voting on this until we have a modified presentation? I, I would hope not. I think we're trying to get this moving forward. and. Uh, the design of the, those type of improvements is, would not affect the plat. This is not approving the street improvements. This is approving. But you'll respond to us when you've studied it and already. Yes, I, I can. Uh, uh, yes. The key to this, though, just so you know, is that there is a way to come out of that shopping center and turn left to go southbound on, on uh, Beltaire. They don't have to go right. They just have to go to that southern exit. And so usually when you provide people with an opportunity to do it right, they will do that. There may be a few exceptions. The key word here, Mr. Landon, is usually. Well, I, I think Mr. Mayo's point is well taken. Yes, I, but we do have, we do have that uh, ability to get them to go left to go southbound with this plan, and I think that's critical. If you don't have that ability, then you almost force people to start doing things they shouldn't do. But this way it gives them an the opportunity to do it correctly. So it's worked out very well with this site plan. So that's one of the reasons why. One thing that often helps is internal signage. Yes. So that until, you, until people become familiar with the traffic flow, here's your way to get out to and go that, south. And that uh, um, northern access there that is a right in and right out only, will have that V kind of triangle um, island mm -hmm. that actually um, you have to force yourself to uh, break the law at that point. Uh, it doesn't doesn't work naturally. You don't just come up and have a choice going right or left. Your only choice is to go right, and there will be signage there also, Mayor. Additional questions, comments, or a motion? Uh, move to approve agenda item number seven, resolution approving the final plat, shops of Palm Cove subdivision, a replat. Second. Second. 
Seconded. Seconded. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries without objection. Agenda item number eight, a resolution approving the transportation impact fee credit agreement, including allocation, construction, and dedication of land within PV Palm Coast LLC for improvements to Beltair Boulevard. Mr. Landon, anything additional? Well, just to throw my support behind the idea of let the developer build this um, instead of us doing it as a separate project, it just makes sense. We have the safeguards that we uh, require them to get the bid so we can make sure that uh, the price is fair and that's really what this is is let the developer while they're out there building their shopping center build the turn lanes and then we use instead of their impact just keeping their impact fees we use those impact fees for these lane improvements it is really a good deal I have one question mr. mayor how are the funds m maneuvered back and forth well the the actual end user uh, retailers are required to pay the impact fees at building permit time. So when they okay. come pick up their building permit, they will pay the city just like everybody else does. Okay. And then that will go into our impact fee fund. And then with this agreement, you're authorizing us to actually reimburse the developer. In other words, in this case, uh, the uh, private property owner who's building the shopping center, putting the infrastructure in, those type of things, and just reimbursing them for those lane improvements. Okay, so, it's so, a re yeah, so it's a reimbursement. We're not actually paying uh, whoever's providing that work no, because it, it could be incorporated no, in the No, the whole. contract would be between the, the developer and the contractor. Right. And then the developer submits those invoices to us, and we reimburse the uh, uh, contractor that's what you're authorizing typically right. we would not do that obviously without your authorization uh, and in this case it's we've done this before a couple of other examples would be the left turn lane on Florida Park Drive into Island Walk and then the right turn lane into Walmart remember how crazy that was and how and how uh, Copperstone <coughs> Village I believe Cobblestone, Co Cobblestone. Cobblestone. Village um, use their impact fees for those improvements. It's worked out real well for us. Good. Now, in the unlikely event that one or more of those lots that have already been sold, if they don't proceed with development, then we won't collect the impact fees. The developer is still going to do the improvements. They'll front the money, and then as we collect impact fees, we will reimburse them. The developer is not required to do the improvements if we don't have the money, uh, but that's why we divide it into A and B. Just so to give you some um, uh, it, it, at this time, then when they do come in to, to build and get the impact fees, then they'd have to come back and put the lanes in. But the timing is such that we have plans in here right now for Alti and uh, Tractor Supply, and I know Gate, if they're not in, they've been in discussion with us. Those three are um, far enough along. You know, until you see anything go vertical, it's never a guarantee, but uh, those are far enough along, we're very confident. Um, so, Mayor, I, I, um, uh, the developer's not going to want to spend the money unless they know they're going to get reimbursed. Um, but there's but, no there's no impact if it, there's no vertical. If that's exactly what I was going to say. Correct. But, but then if the shops aren't there, then you don't have that traffic, and, and so it all it all fits together. Questions, comments, or a motion? Move to approve. Uh, public comment. Can we do public comment? Well, this, this was actually presented under the uh, joint of 6, 7, 8, but we will hold separate public comment. If anyone wishes to speak separately on agenda item number 8, come up to the podium. Seeing none approach the podium, we close public portion meeting, come back to council. Additional questions, comments, or a motion? There is a motion on the floor, Your Honor. Second. Moved and seconded. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries without objection. This brings us to the consent agenda portion of the meeting. This is agenda items 9 through 13. As always, uh, we offer the public the opportunity to speak on any one of these items before council approves them as a group. Would anyone like to speak on any of the agenda items 9 through 13? 9 and 12. 9 and 12. Is there a motion to approve agenda items 10, 11, and 13? So moved. Second. Moved and seconded. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries without objection. Agenda item number nine, a resolution approving change orders for additional service during the construction phase of Holland Park Improvement Project. 
Landon, any comments? This is um, a direct result of delays we've experienced with this project and needing the engineers to um, stay on the job. Most, if not all of this, will be um, reimbursed to the city with uh, liquidated damages caused by if any delays are caused by the developer. That's to be determined. But um, uh, Landon, how does the city go about getting reimbursed for the cost overrun? Well, the liquidated damages is just a matter of us uh, withholding final uh, a portion of the final payment to the uh, contractor. So then we just mm, didn't pay as much as anticipated. Then we use those funds for uh, additional and that's our costs. Plan. Yes, um, you know, and once again, that's all. Uh, some of the delays were have not been the contractor's fault, and they aren't being held responsible for that. So those details will all be wrapped up at the end. No, but Mr. Lannon, some of the media has held up the city for saying that, that we're just uh, going to throw some more money at it without <coughs> or get, uh, get reimbursed. Uh, can't control with the... I wanted to clarify the, that, so yeah. I'm glad Jack went ahead and if he hadn't have pulled it for discussion, I would have. Yep. Um, yeah, it's... Uh, We've had some, I mean, from whether they're tortoises or other items, I mean, there's just a variety of things that have held this project up. Some of them go smoothly and some of them don't. This one is one of those that we've, we've seen some difficulties in. And clearly, some of the delays are not the fault of the contractor. Yes. Uh, as I understand it, one of the issues was go for tortoise relocation. You can't relocate them unless the weather is 75 degrees or warmer. Not something we have much control over, nor does the developer. On the other hand, there were clearly delays that were the developer's fault or the, the contractor's fault, and that's where we're going to collect uh, liquidated damages. Exactly. Since we remove this one from the agenda, are there anyone who wish to speak on agenda item number nine? Jack Cowles, Palm Coast. When you sign a contract with a developer or whoever, doesn't he have to you know, if, uh, prepare for all these incidences that might happen or might not happen? You know, you, you're saying it's not his fault. Well, nothing is anybody's fault uh, unless it's, it's, it's done deliberately. But people know that there are things that have to be preserved, have to be moved. It's the same as if you're going to do with the turtles, right? You, everybody knows that you have to uh, preserve their, their rights. So uh, I, I don't understand how you can say it's not the developer's fault. He signs a contract, he's supposed to be finished by such and such a date. If he doesn't, that's, what it, that's his penalty. Now, my next question is, how do you determine the penalty? Got an answer for you. Next speaker. Speaker. So you don't approach the podium. We'll close the public portion meeting. Come back to council. Um, the issue of fault. Uh, if you were to generate a contract that says the, the contractor is responsible for each and every foreseeable and unforeseeable incident the bid price would be so astronomically high that you wouldn't be able to afford. There has to be reasonableness in the contract. There are things that nobody can anticipate uh, until you get the shovel in the ground. So the contract is a balance between uh, protection of the city and also trying to ensure that the contract that you get is reasonable and affordable uh, for the taxpayers' dollars. How do you determine the damages, the benefit, the uh, amount of liquidated damages? In this case, it's actually in the contract. Uh, uh, usually it's $1,000 a day. Is that the case? Yes. Uh, it's a contract that says every delay that the contractor is responsible for is a $1,000 uh, re reduction in the contract price. The, um, if I may give one example on this one, is that you know, we, we provide a design for the contractor that says, we need to uh, build a road. You're to esca excavate so many feet down and then put a uh, road base uh, in its place and, and then put the asphalt on top of the road base. 
once they dig down and we find what we call unacceptable material, or in this case, muck that is not a good road base and the, the road was going to fail soon, so we tell them to dig down deeper. That's time, that's money, that's not their fault. They were told to, in the contract to dig, you know, two, whatever it was, two feet or whatever. Now we're telling them, oh, you got to go down four feet and add more material. That's the kind of things you don't know until you actually, as the mayor was saying, and, and those are uh, unforeseen. Uh, but they are obligated to build it as per design, but then when we're out there and we know that the design didn't fit the actual underground conditions. That's just one example. There's others where they just had a subcontractor that didn't show up for, for weeks. Well, that's on them. Uh, you know, that, that's totally on them. Uh, and those are what we um, end up determining as to what days and what conditions are not their fault and which ones are. City Council, additional questions, comments, or a motion on agenda item number nine? Move to approve. Second. Moved and second. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries without objection. Agenda item number 12, a resolution approving expenses for roadway bores for the Beltair Median Landscape and Irrigation Project. Mr. Landon. I think everybody has noticed that we are uh, progressing with our median improvements on, on Beltair south of uh, Palm Coast Parkway. Uh, we have uh, divided this project up into segments so that we could stay within our capital improvement plan. The last segment is the remaining portion of the median from uh, Royal Palms down to State Road 100. Uh, we've actually gotten that project started by extending uh, reuse or reclaim water line uh, along Royal Palms to Beltaire. And then we're now going to be able to use our reuse water to water the median. Uh, the first thing you do, obviously, before you do the plants, is you put the irrigation system in. And our crews will do the uh, will be the contractor on this project, and we will install the irrigation line uh, from Royal Palms down to State Road 100. But we don't have the boring equipment, so the, all this contract fo is for is to uh, bore the mm, irrigation line under the intersections. Every time you hit an intersection, you got to go under the intersection and come back up. And that's all this is. Later on, uh, the complete project will be coming forth to City Council. This is in our budget for this year. Um, and we will be uh, purchasing the rest of the irrigation line, the, the plants, all the other things that go along with this. The complete project will come your way. Getting the boring out of the way and getting the boring contractor scheduled and done just helps uh, the schedule of the whole project. Council questions? Seeing none, we'll open the meeting from the public. And from the public, wish to be heard on agenda item number 12. We'll approach the podium. We'll close the public portion meeting. Back to council. Additional questions, comments, or a motion? Move approval. Second. Seconded. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries without objection. This brings us to the public participation portion of the meeting. This is the opportunity for the public to speak on any item not on today's agenda. Please come up to the podium, give us your name, and limit your contribution to three minutes. Good morning, Robert McDonald, Palm Coast. Good morning. Like, I have two questions in, they're both directed to the city attorney. Um, does the city plan on creating a background and a fingerprint requirement prior to this year's election for our candidate for city council and for the mayor? And if so, when are they gonna do it? And if not, why? And my second question is, would the city be responsible if they chose not to do a background check slash fingerprint requirement. Would the city be responsible if a council person or the mayor did have some unrelated issues, unreported issues, I'm sorry, and would and when the city was sued for damages resulting from the undisclosure of a particular item? How are we doing for time, Mayor? We got time? We will get an answer to your question. Okay. Next speaker. I think he was just asking. I have a time. second question. Oh, I thought those I'm were two sorry. questions. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, sir. Okay. Um, this is really important to the city council to consider. Um, obviously, everybody knows what 
what I'm holding in my hand. Um, the fire department came to my house last week and changed all my smoke detectors. The fire department came and changed all my smoke detectors in my house last week, free of charge. Fortunately, one of the firefighters pulled down a smoke detector and it was defective. So obviously I went out and replaced it. But the average homeowner doesn't change their batteries and they wouldn't have known, and I being a retired firefighter, would not have known that I had a defective smoke detector had it not been for the fire department. So what I would like to ask the council to do is, because insurance companies unfortunately don't supply the fire department with smoke detectors and or batteries anymore. I don't know why. But maybe the city could consider having a program where either the city would supply smoke detectors and or batteries to make these guys' job a lot easier. Because it's, uh, it's a lot cheaper to replace a $15 smoke detector than it is to lose your house. So I would like the council to consider helping the fire department either buy smoke detectors for families that can't afford them or at least supply the fire department with batteries to, to help people who can't afford the batteries. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker. Uh, Steve Carr, Palm Coast. Uh, I want to say that y'all have done a wonderful job on Island Walk and also on Holland Park. Uh, but I'd like to address the uh, issue of, it, of traffic on Florida Park Drive. And we're concerned that uh, more traffic will end up going down Florida Park Drive to get to Island Walk or to Holland Park. And we just want to know what the city has planned to uh, deter that from happening. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Next speaker. Good morning. My name is John Brady. I certainly do not want to be accused of not wanting to save the city money, especially since the city debt is $170 million. And our ratio of debt to revenue is 121%. But I have some serious questions about, about the proposed loan to America's Bank. Help me to understand how the city council has the authority to approve a $43 million loan when Section 7, Paragraph 3, Subset C of the City Charter states, limitation to the council's contracting authority. Unless authorized by the electors of the city at a duly held referendum, the council shall not enter into a lease purchase or any other contract, any other unfunded multi-year contract, the repayment of which extends in excess of 36 months or exceeds $15 million. For the record, I've asked to see the contract with America's Bank and I've yet to see it. I would also like to know about the closing cost on this loan. I would also like to see a chart outlining the payments on the 2007 bond and if it's not recast as compared to the payments on the entire loan for Americas. Finally, what happened to the scheduled bond payment that was due this year? Thank you. Thank you. We'll get an answer for your question. Next speaker. Good morning, everybody. <clears throat> My name is Marilyn Petruzzi. I'm the neighborhood watch leader and spokesperson for the residents in the R section of Palm Coast. Residents from our group were at the May 5th, 2015 council meeting. We asked for an angled fence like the one on Palm Coast Parkway over Route 95 to be put in the backside area of Ralph Carter Park. At the end of the meeting, Mayor Nets told us money would be put aside for this fence. Mr. Landon stated engineers were working on this. It's been almost a year and no such fence has been put up. We residents continue to have our homes vandalized and to be harassed and cursed at by people accessing Ralph Carter Park from Richardson Drive. As an example, one evening two little children who live on Richardson Drive were riding their bikes near the drainage ditch. 
Residents saw two men pull up in a truck and park next to the ditch. The men jumped out of the truck, pulled up their hoods to hover, cover their faces, then climbed the fence to the park. They came back over the fence in a few minutes. They jumped back in the truck and sped away, just missing the children. This incident, type of incident occurs all the time. It appears the back area of the park is being used for some type of sales or exchange. We have shown pictures of the individuals and their vehicles to deputies. We also see people arbitrarily throw oranges and branches at our homes, then jump over the fence to the park. These are not little children. They are 17 or 18 years old. Perhaps they're high on something. We don't know. Several of our mailboxes have been knocked down also. We residents have attended neighborhood watch meetings, we've spoke at council meetings, we've been interviewed by newspaper reporters and on the TV news, all for the same issue over and over again, yet nothing has been done to help us. Ms. Shipley, Mr. DiLorenzo, and Mr. Nobile have been in my home regarding with a meeting with residents regarding the same issue, yet nothing has changed. People, please. We residents do not deserve to live like this. There needs to be a fence in the backside area of the park which can't be climbed to stop access from Richardson Drive. It's not a, lot, a, lot of, it's not a large area of fence that's needed. If you're looking at the drainage ditch, it's 25 feet to the right. From the left of the drainage ditch, it's, it's just down to the back of the park. Can someone please help us and tell us when some type of fence is going to be put back here to stop all this from Richardson Drive? We need help. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker. <coughs> Good morning. Ed Fuller. Good morning. Honorable Mayor Nets, Honorable Jason DiLorenzo, Honorable Steve Nobile, Honorable Bill McGuire, Virginia Smith City Clerk. Jim Landon, city manager, Bill Reichman, city attorney. Uh, I come here today on behalf of my grandson. Uh, we attended the extravaganza, and that was unbelievably, what a great event. Uh, I did want to be remiss and not come here and congratulate the employees from the Parks and Recreation for their heartfelt uh, gratitude and thanks and welcoming attitude that they showed me and my family. My grandson just absolutely loved it. And, uh, I want to mention these people by name, so I apologize to these individuals if I mispronounce their name because I didn't get a chance uh, to personally talk to them. Roxy Gonzalez, James Hurst, Ginger Pamel, Alex Boyer, Crystal Long, Mary McGowan, Shira Jackson, Natasha Cangelosi, Ali Rock Yen Yenako, and C.J. Johnston. They took time off on Saturday before Easter, a big holiday, to make our family a holiday a very wonderful and real experience. And it was a great call by not having that uh, Easter egg on today because it rained, we had torrential rains. So I want to thank you all. And I want to say this uh, from heartfelt, from our family, to everyone that uh, participated in that. It was a wonderful event. I just want to say thank you so much. Appreciate it. Thank you for your kind words. I'm sure staff appreciates it. Next speaker. Next speaker. Jack Kyle, Palm Coast. As we move along in our lifetime and the, the city grows and we develop a little more problems, I think now is the time to really consider changing the charter. There are things that come up that I think should be put into the charter. As a, for instance, all right, I think that no one should run for office unless they live in Palm Coast a certain amount of time. I mean, not somebody that comes from the north, settles down, he's here for six months, and all of a sudden he wants to become a council member. You and I both know that you can't learn anything about the city in six months. But that's, that's, that's going a little bit deep 
I just brought it as an example. But there are other things that come up, things that when they established the charter, right? They, uh, maybe they never, never thought about it, or maybe they didn't think we would get this big. But there are things that should be changed, or things that should be altered. And uh, I, I think it's now is the time to do it. See, not a year from now or two years from now. I think now is the time to sit down, talk about it, and say, this is what we need, and we'll get somebody to uh, give us a suggestion. So I say, think about it. We need it. And we need it badly. Thank you. Next speaker. Good morning. Courtney Mucho with the American Lung Association. I just want to say thank you for having us here. And um, we are here to accept the proclamation for recognizing um, Turquoise Takeover for Women's Health Week, May 9th through May 14th. So thank you. Thank you very much. Can you do a photo Sure. We'll be back. <coughs> We're going up here for a photo show. Oh. A St. Patrick's Day green shirt. I know. It's a wild time. It's a wild time. There we hold the... Back to comments from citizens. A next speaker, please. So you don't approach the podium. We'll close the public portion meeting. Go back to council. But first, let's see if we can get some answers to some of the questions. With the question about background check, uh, I've discussed that with the city attorney. I've discussed that with the supervisor of elections. And I've also discussed that uh, at the Tallahassee level. And the reality is that there is nothing that requires it, suggests it. Um, and the issue of responsibility. So suppose we did a background check and found out that um, Mr. DiLorenzo. <laughs> Good, I'm glad you went that way. <laughs> I don't know. Did something that would, would, would show up on his record. Um, a record is spotless. A record is spotless. Yeah. Let's assume there was a little blemish on the record. Yeah. At what point does that little blemish become noteworthy enough that, that somebody ought to publicize it? Uh, each candidate, when they, they file for election, they expose themselves to public scrutiny, to the media scrutiny. Um, quite frankly, there's nothing that I've been able to discover that would suggest that, A, the city should or could do a background check. And even if we did, there's no responsibility uh, other than the part of the voters to be discriminating in choosing their candidates. Uh, the issue of the city supplying batteries or smoke detectors. Uh, thank you for your kind words about our fire department. Uh, due to my temporary, hopefully temporary disability, I actually had them come to my home and change my batteries. The problem is that there are many, many different types of smoke detectors. Some battery operated, some not. Some with replaceable batteries, some not. Uh, not all smoke detectors are compatible with all systems uh, that exist. So for the city to try to stock a, a variety of smoke detectors and or batteries just simply is taking over, subsidizing uh, what is really a public and a private responsibility. If I provide free batteries to Mr. DiLorenzo, then I have to provide free batteries to Mr. Nobile, and that becomes a responsibility that really is not part of the city. Traffic plans on Florida Park Drive. Um, as most of you know, I live off Florida Park Drive. Uh, Island Walk is not yet complete, but I have not seen any significant increase in traffic. I'm not aware of any, but it is something that we're going to continue to monitor. 
to the allegation that the city has $170 million worth of debt, let me correct that. That is absolutely incorrect. The city has no debt. The debt is a utility department debt. That is not uh, part of the city per se. So therefore, the portion of the city charter uh, that the gentleman referred to does not apply to what the utility department does. Uh, the city has no debt. There is no taxpayer dollar involved in this, ref in this refinancing. It is a utility debt, and it is paid for 100% out of uh, utility rates. Uh, the issue of the fence in the R section of Palm Coast continues to be an issue. Um, quite frankly, I'm not convinced that a fence, a taller fence, a bigger fence, an angle fence will solve the problem, but it's something we will look at again and again. Um, kind words about the extravaganza and parks and recreation staff, they do a wonderful job. Charter change. Mr. Uh, Reichman, I do believe we do have a resident requirement, do we not, our charter? Yes, in order to qualify for, for, you have to be a resident. There's not a time frame specifically for qualification, but you have, obviously have to be a resident uh, in order to. And end of your district also. If correct. You're for yeah, I, yeah, I thought, the, but the, I thought the narrow question was, is there a minimum requirement? And, and, there I, and I do not right. believe that is isn't. And while I agree with Mr. Carroll completely, uh, the only way to really know the issues of Palm Coast is to live here and experience them. Uh, I'm not sure that six months or two years or one year or six years uh, is, is the, the answer. Again, I think the answer lies with the voters. Uh, if you feel that a candidate with more years of residence is better equipped to handle the city's issues than a candidate with fewer, that's the way you'll vote. Uh, ultimately, I think this is an issue for the voters to decide. And I think that handles most of the questions. Discussion by City Council of Matters not on the agenda. Mr. DiLorenzo, I'm going to start with you, sir. No, no, nothing. Thank you. Mr. Nobile. Uh, two, two quick things. First, a quick question. Uh, really shouldn't bring it up here, but just to answer. Uh, since we're talking about island walk shops, um, I was there yesterday, and uh, I was pulling out onto, or, or I was driving on Selica, uh, is that Silica Way? The exit. Yeah. And it's a very wide exit, and there's one arrow that points forward. Is that not completed yet? Or, I mean, it, it, was, a, it was a mess. There were cars three across, and you couldn't figure out who was going where, because all there was, it used to be two lanes, a right lane and a left lane. Now there's just one big arrow pointing forward, and it's, it's at least two lanes is this coming, coming out. Of coming out of Island Walk? Yeah. No, Celica Way is not part of Island Walk. Well, it's, it's that intersection. Is yeah, coming out of coming out of Island Walk. Yeah. I think um, technically that's King's Way. King's Way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I take first. Think, I've heard of it. We'll take a look. Yeah, at it. it's just it's just one giant arrow. It should be a, a forward. Two. Yeah, there's. It's not there. You mean painted on the street? Or huh? paint, yeah, painted, painted on, on the street. street. Yeah. We'll. Uh, We'll and, and there was like, th nobody knew, and one guy stopped, of course, with the biggest car, stopped in the middle. <laughs> so nobody could make a oh, left turn or right turn, you know. <laughs> Fortunately, the light. In there, left turn? In there, left arrow in green. In there, so, left turn arrow there? Yes. There yes. Is. But. Okay, so there should be two the lanes. just the left turn arrow goes, and that truck, was that, that guy with okay. the Hummer. So, Something that we need to look at. Uh, yeah, 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 it was yeah. just odd. I was hey, there may be some interim things we can do, but ultimately this is going to be part of the old Kings Road widening process. Oh, all right. Yeah, yeah but, but just painting, a, yeah. In yeah. the meantime, there to needs be. to be two lanes going out of there. Yeah, yes. it used to be, so uh, it just surprised me. Well, and I probably never noticed until that Hummer stood in the middle. <laughs> yeah. And you know who you are out there, so <laughs> don't do that again. Uh, second, the, the uh, Richardson Drive. Um, I'd like to know, and I don't know how to do this, but this is what I'd like to try and get to, is do we, are, are we having a potential problem in the park as far as uh, illegal dealings of sorts? Um, I, you know, I, I, I want to separate 
kids jump in the fence and illegal activity being done in the park. Um, you know, when you see a car pull up, somebody get out and somebody get back in and the car drive away, it, it's usually not a, uh, it's usually not a good thing. You know, there's something. So I, I'd like to know how, how we could go about, I mean, uh, I, I mean, is going as far as working with the sheriff and saying, can we, can we, uh, if I, if I could. Sure. Yes, we've been working with the sheriff, and, and uh, it has been a priority. Uh, if you notice most of the comments, it's not in the park. It's on Richardson Drive. Drive and yeah. the sheriff's office has also spent a lot of time uh, dealing with, with that. Uh, we haven't had problems in the park okay. uh, that we're aware of. Not, you know, we hear stories in every park right. that right. there's people doing things that people wonder. Uh, about as to what that activity is, and it's a constant um, uh, responsibility of the sheriff and the city to uh, try to discourage and, and eliminate um, inappropriate activity. We'll continue to do that. Um, uh, and but Ralph Carter Park is very active right now. Yeah. I mean, it's got a lot of we've got a lot of uh, activities there. Uh, it is a it's turned out to be a very very nice park. Um, if there's illegal activities going on at Richardson Drive, and there have been some arrests on Richardson Drive. Yeah. Um, so, uh, but Mark is in the audience listening to this, and we'll continue to push hard, and we'll continue to uh, ask the Sheriff's Office to pay specific attention to that any area that is reported that there's yeah. suspicious the activity. Um, which is close to this fence area. Is what yeah, and that's said. it. It's that area is far from the playing area. Yes. It's not. It's not like you jump over the fence and you're on the basketball courts. It's a. It's a distance. Right. You know, it's, out there, and uh, you know, it'd be it'd be easy to detect something's going on out there because really nothing should be going on out there. It's there. It's nothing. Yes. It's grass. We work Unless hard on, on trying to make sure that. I mean, obviously, we want our parks to be safe, and we'll continue to work with that and uh, with the sheriff's office to make sure that, that they're as safe as possible. Good. That's all I have, Mr. Mayor. Mr. Wire. I have nothing. Discussion by city attorney of matters not on the agenda. Well, Mr. Mayor, you and I will be introducing an attorney-client session in just a little bit, so I'll, I'll save my, keep my powder dry. Discussion by city manager of matters not on the agenda. I... Uh, uh, would just like to announce the uh, annual Arbor Day uh, event coming up. It's a big event. That's where you bring a canned food uh, and you get a free free tree. Very popular event where we hand out the trees. It is May 7th. Uh, the, there is a 5K run that starts at 8 o'clock. The actual Arbor Day celebration uh, starts at, at 9 and runs till 2 that day at Central Park uh, right, right here. Um, Every year we have uh, butterflies, a butterfly release and a lot of uh, nice vendors. Great, great event. Hopefully people uh, uh, come out and enjoy that. Uh, Mayor, with that, that's all I have. One thing I would add on the Arbor Day event, for the first time, the city is going to sponsor a shredding truck. So if you have back tax forms that you want to get rid of and you don't just want to throw them out in the recycle bin, or if you've got sensitive papers that you want to be sure don't fall into the wrong hands bring them to our event we'll have a truck there and you can shred your documents it's, it's a it's one of the private vendors that uh, do this with certification to make sure that uh you know we aren't going the city isn't going to touch them it's just Somebody talk to the sheriff that they that's are. what i want to make sure it's not just a wheel that pushes the documents in and then they go back in no, no okay. this is this is uh, one of those that uh, companies oh, yeah, use no. <laughs> to make sure the documents are destroyed yeah. and, and doesn't sure. get out in public at this time, I'm going to recess the city council meeting, and the city council is going to reconvene for an executive session with our attorney. Present at that meeting will be myself, Councilmember DiLorenzo, Councilmember McGuire, Councilmember Nobile, City Manager Jim Landrum, and the two city county, the two city attorneys, Deborah Bab Nutcher and William E. Reichman. This is to discuss a matter that cannot be discussed openly in the public at this time because it involves litigation. There will be a court reporter there. A transcript of the meeting will be taken, and when the issue is resolved, that transcript will become part of the public record. Uh, after the executive session, we will reconvene this meeting for the purposes of adjournment. 
but there will be nothing other than a motion to adjourn, so the public is more than welcome to leave at this point. At this time, we stand in recess, and Just we will reconvene Mayor, in five minutes for an executive session. We are required to uh, indicate the estimated length of the attorney-client session, and I would indicate it would be about 45 minutes. 45 minutes, give or take a little bit.